Hi everyone, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin PF, and on today's episode we're going to be covering something from an area that I haven't actually touched yet, as evident by the scratch off of Colorado in the USA. Just before we get into the whiskey, if you don't already know what I'm doing with this map behind me, this is a scratch map and every time I cover a whiskey from a region or a country on this channel, I'll scratch off the map and maybe one day I'll be able to scratch off everything, you know, if every country starts producing whiskey. But for the US, because it's so massive, we're going state by state, everywhere else gets a sort of country, uh, apart from places like Australia, which um, things like Australia I will be covering soon-ish. I've got a few drams in store, so it's going to happen. But yeah, keep an eye on that map and hopefully it'll be changing over time. On to the whiskey itself. This is Tin Cup American Whiskey. Now this isn't a bourbon, and there's some key differences in that, but uh, I saw this in a local supermarket and I had to pick it up. It looked very interesting with the little kind of literally tin cup on the top. And it's actually surprisingly cheap. For me, it was about £30. I think I might have even picked it up on deal for £25, which in my area is not to be sniffed at at all. Uh, if you rank that up into dollars and things like that, I think it's starting to push into the kind of mid sections. But um, it's uh, supposedly a pretty good dram. As you can see, I've had a good go at this. So uh, let's get into it and see where we're at with it. It's uh, 42%, so just above the 40% minimum. It's uh, an American whiskey, as I said before. So um, the, there's a key distinction between that and bourbon. Now, this is actually a blended whiskey. Uh, I'm not actually sure if it says it anywhere on here. I think so, but it's... There's a lot of extra information on here about where it's from. It's Colorado, 84 proof. They make a big um, fuss about mixing it with pure Rocky Mountain water, as on here. There's even an elevation on there as well. Look at that, 5,657 feet. That's high. So it's, uh, it's basically it's a high rye whiskey. So the two that it's blended with is a high rye bourbon, which is made in Indiana and then it's mixed with a Colorado single malt and uh, put together with Rocky Mountain water and we get this. Now they say it's aged for a minimum of four years. They release it when it's ready, but it's stored in, in uh, new American oak barrels at a char level three. But uh, that's the reason why it isn't bourbon because it's a, it's a blend. It's the long and short of that and it's got some single malt whiskey in there. But uh, as we'll go into it, let's um, have a little nose of it and we'll see how similar to other things that are available on the market from that area are, if it's similar to any bourbons for instance. Let's have a nose. Now for me there's a there's a couple of different flavour profiles, obviously bourbon has got a very distinct flavour profile and within that flavour profile it can be quite varying but there is that kind of telling note. This is has got kind of the rye notes all over it, that extra spiciness but it's got a kind of odd creaminess to it as well. Uh, and I, I mean, odd in an endearing way, definitely not a negative way. It's yeah, a bit of creaminess, a bit more vanilla. It's, uh, it's certainly an interesting nose. Let's try a taste. Mm. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's, it's, there's definitely some of that um, bourbon characteristics in there. Something that I like about this kind of rye mixtures Rye for me is always a little hot, a little spicy. But when it's part of a blend, something happens to it, it brings it down a little bit. There's definitely that rye spice there, but you get almost a kind of um, like effervescent fizziness on the tongue uh, when, you, when you sort of hold it there and swill it around. And that kind of translates to a, a mixing it with those creamy flavors and it turns into a bit of like a cream soda sort of flavor behind all that kind of bourbon vanilla-iness. It's interesting. I don't really get much of the char. It's um, I'm not sure what level three means to be honest. Uh, I'm not sure how far down the, the char scale that is, but for me this isn't kind of smoky or charry or anything like that. It's just um, the kind of similar bourbon flavors that you get from most bourbons in their charred barrels. So maybe that's just what I'm used to. But all in all, it's a pretty good dram. I mean, especially for the price of it. It's um, something I wouldn't sniff out buying again. I'm very happy that I picked up this bottle. Incidentally, the, uh, the kind of allure of this bottle is of course this tin cup on the top. I'll just unscrew this for you. So it literally, it comes with its own little cup, a little seal that I've broken obviously, 
and then underneath you have a cork, a synthetic cork with, uh, with a nice little thing. So it's, it's, there's a lot of nice little touches to that. Now, I know it's a lot of packaging um, when really we're talking about a liquid here, but it's, it's all part of it. And I think the reason why it's called Tin Cup is literally the Tin Cup that is this kind of similar sort of thing to what miners in Colorado used to drink out of. They used to take a tin cup with them, drink their whiskey. Probably not as quality as this sort of thing back then. It was probably raw spirit straight off the still and probably sent a few people blind. But there you go, that's the tin cup. Uh, an interesting dram, interesting looking, interesting tasting, especially for the UK market. I think it's definitely something to look into. If you haven't tried this yet, I do recommend it actually. Um, I would definitely buy another bottle of it. For the price of it, it's good to have around. It's something interesting to show people. Uh, it's a nice entryway into the kind of bourbons, especially the rise, if you know somebody who isn't ordinarily into that sort of thing. A little quick overview of the tin cup then. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully I'll be scratching off a few more squares and countries off of this in the future. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to watch more videos.